Academy Award-winning actor Richard Dreyfuss spoke to the La Jolla Golden Triangle Rotary Club on October 14, 2011 regarding the Dreyfus Initiative Foundation and its efforts to improve civics in our educational system. This is part five of six of a roughly 50-minute talk. So we have a curriculum, and the curriculum is actually different than the one I grew up with by about two degrees. It's just a shift in paradigm. It's, it emphasizes the teacher-student relationship. It doesn't talk about the unions. It doesn't talk about evaluating the teachers. And it doesn't shove down your throat 15 things that have to be covered in one hour. Okay? It teaches reason and logic and clarity of thought. And if you've ever attained clarity of thought, you know that that is a pleasure from God. Clarity is something that literally offers its own and immediate reward. But if you have values taught in American civics or history classes, how do you get them out of school and into the culture? Because parents no longer know what to say to their kids, and ministers don't know what to say to their congregations, and artists, filmmakers, don't know what to say in their films, which is why American films have been about nothing at all for the last 20 years, except teenage angst masquerading as werewolves, and self-congratulation on the science of film, like Avatar. But are they about anything of any meaning? No. Why? Because you can only do that when you know something about our society and we are anchorless. We are in the void. We don't know the difference between a high priority and a low priority problem. And we have to get that back. So, I have created an American history play competition among all the regional theaters of the country, the Hoya, and the Globe, and the Taper, and all of all. There are 75 theaters, and we've reached 31 so far, 31 yes. 31 have said yes out of the 31 we've reached. And their mandate is simple. We ask them to look for plays that are about America, and specifically American history as it was, as it might have been, American futures, the different versions, and it, and it has one simple rule. If the artistic director of that theater thinks that it will do his theater well by being included in the season, it is automatically qualified for the prize. And the prize is, at the end of every season, phones will ring and hark in writers' phones. And they will listen for a minute and then drop dead of a heart attack. Because they And we'll do that for at least 20 years. And we will teach Americans how to write American history, which they don't know how to do now. And they always write them as if they're statues wearing togas and making speeches. But America has an extraordinary history, known and unknown. And the best way, I thought, is start in the theater, which then could become a Broadway hit, which then could become a feature film, which then could become a multi-part on TV. And we will not interfere, we do not vet the plays. Only the artistic director and he treats the play in the contest as he treats every other play in the season. If he workshops it, if he table reads it, whatever he does. If it's about America, all he has to do is let us know that he's got it. And our judges who represent all the opinions, political opinions in America, will go and want to see that play and the others. And then they'll make their announcements. And let me tell you, there's very little that will spur an artist more than the possibility of making $300,000. And so, we do this for 20 years, and I guarantee you, 
that we will raise the level of theater, movies, and art, and we will raise the level of how to glimpse ourselves, which is what art's basic mandate is. The mandate of art, and I speak as an artist, is, is no matter whether you're talking music or writing or dance or poetry, is to show a mirror of mankind to himself. And in the theater, although they don't know it, when an audience comes into the theater, they are already holding hands because they are about to see themselves reflected back. And there's nothing more powerful on earth than knowing that you've got them. You've got them. And whether you're making them laugh, which means that you are relieving them of a grief they do not know they carry, or whether you're playing a drama and showing them the most complex part of their most inner life. You are doing a mitzvah. You are giving a gift to mankind. And artists know that. Artists don't like to talk about it because it sounds ego-maniacal. But in my case, I like to keep the light up so I can see the faces of the audience. Because I did a play a couple of years ago on Broadway with 17 brilliant comic actors. 17. And there was a scene where all of us were on stage at once. And when you heard the laughter coming from the audience, you saw people look like cats in a bag. Their bodies were going one way and their heads were going another and they just didn't know how to sit still because we were making them laugh so hard, which was a gift. And let me tell you, you've heard it a thousand times. People walk up to an actor on the street and they say, can I have your autograph? And the guy says, either yes or no. Someone walks up to me on the street and says, are you Richard Dreyfus?" I say, yes. He says, Thank you. And there is nothing in the world more moving and more humble. Because you don't say that to your divorce lawyers. You don't say that to your neurosurgeons. You don't say that to your rabbis or your ministers. You say that to actors. Because actors give you surcease from sorrow. This concludes part five of six of the presentation. To learn more about the Dreyfus Initiative Foundation, visit the DreyfusInitiative.org. To learn more about the La Jolla Golden Triangle Rotary Club, visit La Jolla GT Rotary.org. To learn more about Dan McClellan, the producer of this video, visit DanMcClellan.com.